Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, Smith and I are going to go through our entire Gertie process. <laughs> Gertie being our the camper. vintage 1961 T20 Avion camper. So what we will cover are the basic like why categories of like why we chose to do this, how we did it, the processes, and at the end, ultimately, what we thought and would we, would we do it again. So make sure you stay for that. First, we will start with basically why we decided to do this. So I'll let you explain. So basically, I just had been telling Wade, I really want a van. I want to travel. Obviously, it wouldn't be a full-time thing right now, but we were wanting to get into traveling in a van um, on weekends and trips and stuff. It, it's easier. Um, I like the lifestyle, but it's also easier to have um, trips planned with your dog or with our dog. I thought it would be really fun. Um, vans are really expensive and they come with motors and just all kinds of stuff. So Wade decided this would be a compromise because my uncle had this little trailer that he basically used for storage. Pretty much. Yeah. And um, we, we really weren't sure if when we were asking him if we could buy it from him, what we were getting into. Um, we just thought it'd be a fun project. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, <laughs> and we honestly didn't know if he would sell it to us. Right. So this, this, like Samantha said, this was the compromise to the van. Um, I guess basically just to see if we enjoyed. Yeah. The compromise like for right now. <laughs> for, for right now. Yeah. This, this is our jumping off point. Yeah. I will say. Um, and her uncle did have it sitting just basically as a storage shed. Yeah. Um, and it was basically, if we couldn't get it from him at a decent price, I don't think we would have went forward with trying to locate a camper. No, it was kind of like we had, we had just, it was there. We figured we could get it for a decent price because it was small and in rough shape. Bad um, shape. Uncle had had it for a really long time, and we knew there was a lot of work um, that would need to be done. So we thought it would be a really good project to not spend a ton of money, but we knew we was gonna have to put a little money in it, and we thought it would just be a fun project to do. So it was only based on I guess this project was based on if my uncle would sell us this camper because we would have never sought out another one. Probably. Right. We would have did, done something different or whatever with our time and our money. But right. this is kind of the route we went because he decided, after a couple of weeks of asking, he decided to sell it to us. And it was in the ballpark that we had thought it would be. So that's what we got. We brought the camper home. Brought the, brought the camper <laughs> home. And that's when we put together our, um, our plan mm -hmm. on basically tearing everything out of here. And putting it back yeah. with a budget. Yeah. I'm gonna say our <laughs> budget. Our first budget. A lot through this video. Um, so between Samantha and I, we both have um, decent knowledge on putting, like building things in a sense. So like Samantha's learned a lot, definitely since we remodeled our house. Yeah. I do have more, but we also relied on information from neighbors and um, YouTube, YouTube a yeah. lot. Um, which, getting into renovating a camper like ours, like if you were going to do an Avion, Airstream, a metal inside outside um, rounded camper, it's very unique and there's not a lot of information on the internet of specifically how. It's how. Each individual has done it. Um, there's really no right or wrong way in mm -hmm. most senses. There are some things that people would recommend just 
but there's no right or wrong, uh, black or white, you know, just straight cut. There's multiple there's ways. There's no manual. <laughs> yeah, there, there's multiple ways of doing it, and what we did was we found what we felt yeah. was in our wheelhouse Budget. of ability mm -hmm. to do it. Um, so, basically, gutting the whole thing was a cinch. Yeah, so we knew that we were going to have to replace everything. So, basically, when we did our demo days, we were basically just trying to get everything down to the um, frame. Shell, yeah. yeah, the outer shell, the frame. So, we had to take the interior shell, the electrical, the plumbing, anything and everything that was in here, we took it out because it was 60 something years old yeah very and very old it and all needed to be replaced and patched we felt so um to have proper rewiring and plumbing and it was just better just to start fresh there were some things we had initially talked about that we possibly would keep um like maybe the upper cabinets in the kitchen mm -hmm. or possibly the shower pan. shower pan um I, at this point, I wish we would have kept that shower pan. Yes. But to get those things out, the I'm glad we didn't do the uppers because it feels so open in here mm -hmm. and it's so nice. We have plenty of storage um, underneath everything that we don't need that upper cabinet or the cabinet that the utility stuff was in. We just really didn't need that. But we had initially thought about keeping those things. But they were just so old and so worn out that we mm -hmm. really the only thing i wish the only thing i would have went back if we could have done it again was keep that shower pan yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes it got really hard um not to continue on with the demo part of it yeah um because it was very easy but some of the things it was almost like in order for us to to remove something we had to remove something else to get to that so yeah. the shower pan kind of fell into that and I think it was a little bit of frustration, and yeah. it ended up just being We could have went about so. it differently, but we were just ripping things out. We were ready to start this project. We were very enthusiastic and very excited to start this process. Mm -hmm. um, I think we <laughs> initially thought it was going to take us a couple of months to get this project done. We expected to have this thing done in, like, what, maybe four to six months? Yeah. We thought we were going to be able to use it really quickly. That was a joke. Um, so, yeah, that would go along with re-upping our budget. Um, we spent a lot of time on this project, a lot more time than we initially thought. I will say when we made the budget, we had no idea what we were talking about. When we made the budget, we didn't know how much things would cost and how many tools we would have to buy to actually do this project. Yeah, so I knew instantly that probably what would cost us most on putting this stuff back together was the interior skins, the aluminum uh, sheets that we would have to buy um, to put inside. Um, the problem that we ran into is there's nowhere remotely close to us that you can go and pick these things up from. So yeah. we had to do multiple orders and have it shipped out of Georgia and it just become, it, it really caused our budget to continue to go up yeah. along with the tools that Samantha yeah. was talking about, like, like the metal shear cutters, yeah. um, rivets, rivets, rivet guns, just learning a slew how to of do, eat, and buying the materials and and buying the things to put these things together. We had to learn how to use these tools because who, unless you work with metal, I don't know who uses a rivet gun or rivets or clecos. Like these are things that we know how to do now. Yeah. Never and I felt like we did a really good job I with the so interior metal. Like we did really good. Um, yeah. There are some imperfections, but honestly, to do something like this, unless you are a professional, you are gonna have some imperfections. But I feel really proud of what we did with that. But that was probably the most we spent on one thing was the metal, the interior metal. I don't um, remember the actual cost I don't, of all the metal. I just remember it being. It was probably over three grand. Yeah, so our first yeah. budget we put in place was what? Our first budget was, and it wasn't like a strict budget. It was like a, we were planning on spending maybe six to eight thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. <laughs> we thought this was, I mean, we thought we were going to spend a decent amount, but we did not expect to spend 
the amount of money. But so I just mentioned that we spent over three grand on the aluminum for the metal, like walls, just for the walls. Just for the walls. Just for the walls. And it was very scary um, because one, they're expensive. Two, we had to order them. So cutting those things yeah. were, it, it was really. It was scary. It, it, it bothered me to the point, <laughs> like I was really scared to put these walls up just for the simple fact of like, I knew I was going to have to cut these things and it was get it right the first time or just continue to spend money. So we did continue to spend money and we had to order, um, I think we did three different orders. So the first time we ordered, we obviously, we did not know. It was, it's hard to figure out how much you need to measure for in a rounded camper. So we didn't measure properly. We only needed a couple more sheets. And then we order, we didn't want to order too much. So we ordered another order, mm -hmm. didn't order enough sheets. I think we only needed one more sheet when we ordered that last time. So every time it costs more to ship it because it comes on um, like a pallet or actually we actually opted for a cheaper version and it was folded into a box but either way rolled yeah rolled sorry it was rolled um and it still is just outrageous um so yeah yeah so really just the the aside from just really blowing the budget up from from i don't remember how many months into it to how long it took us to complete the thing um <laughs> It was a lot of trips to the the local hardware store, oh Home Depot, gosh. Lowe's, and I'm talking about Daily. trips multiple where days. we would leave multiple times with nothing because the uniqueness of these campers, nothing fits at all. I think I think we spent so many trips to the hardware store just to try to figure out what we were going to um, put around. The window The trim. windows. The trim for the windows. I mean, everything you can think of, just think that, I mean, you won't even, you won't even realize how many things you need to think about. The small things, the trim, the, I mean, like the lights and things like that, that's easy. But the trim and like what kind of, I don't know, it, it's insane. Just like I can't even think of it right stuff. now. It's, yeah. yeah, it's, think about details. It's, it's definitely... And it's not even like when you think about details of renovating a home, that's cut and dry. You just pick out what color or what brand or what size. This is, you got to figure out what, could, like, it may not be used for that. And you can just, like, fit it to be used for what you need it for. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. So Yeah. So like the we had to do a lot of that. Yeah. The, the flooring, easy to do. Yeah. Um, the cabinets, I've never done anything like that, but it was really easy to do. Other than they're a little bit rounded on the inside, yeah, kind of had to figure that out. Yeah, since the walls aren't straight, everything's rounded. Everything's you kind of have to, you know, measure it out. And I didn't have a template to put up there. And every time I tried to make a template, it was just oh so gosh. aggravating. And I would just, I would just like Hulk out. But anyways. That actually um, makes me think of the walls for the bathroom. Oh, that's where I'm getting to. Oh, okay, okay. The electrical was really easy. Um, like I said, a, a lot of the plumbing of this, was easy. The plumbing was easy. A lot of the stuff I learned remodeling our house. Yeah. Um, but the partition from the main area to the bathroom, the walls there came on a track, which was probably original. I would have to assume. Yeah. And of course, I had to demolish those to get those walls down and get the rest of this metal off. I don't know how many weeks it took us to figure out what to use as those tracks. Um, good luck on finding any information on YouTube when it comes to the tracks for those partition walls. Um, there's plenty of people who build the walls, but they don't build them with those tracks. Um, and we knew with the little amount of space that we were working with, giving up an inch would be like giving up a foot. In, yeah. this, in this camper so even going to Google Google had a lot of suggestions um, but everybody calls something different and you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and you ask them for whatever it is you read online they look at you like what in the holy heck is this <laughs> talking about yeah but over time I did stumble across some yeah. things and we did make it work yeah you just basically had to 
make your own track kind of deal, yeah. which it worked. It it's, worked out. It's great. Um, nice, sturdy walls. Mm -hmm. They look way nicer than the original ones, um, and they're a lot thicker and nicer. Not t like everything that we added in here was a little bit. It's we didn't want to add too much weight in the camper. Right. Everything was very light. This camper was originally very light. Um, we may have added a little bit of weight, um, adding the actual wood instead of, I don't even know what that stuff was. That was the original walls and the original countertops. They were, they were something different. Yeah, I'm you not know, sure. So, I don't know, but so, yeah, you, we added a little extra yeah, weight, but maple. everything is so much sturdier and nicer without adding too much weight to the camper. Yeah, so. I said maple, but I think it was birch countertops. Yeah, right? it's like birch, birch countertops. Birch and, and two um, by fours and yeah. plywood and things They're like that. Very, so. um, very minimum weight, but we did add a little bit extra um, sturdiness, and I think it looks nice and feels nice. So, Yep. Um, very um, durable. And then when it came to... Um, painting um i'm almost certain you rolled the primer for the inside i rolled right? the primer on the inside and then um and it took a long time to it do it really took a long yeah long time. And the ceilings were awful yes <laughs> so at some, at some point we realized it may be after we primed it and it i think it was during prom we were we, looking into buying a paint we bought spray. a paint spray where we, yeah. we went to um uh, Harbor Freight. Yeah. yeah, we went to Harbor Freight and bought a paint sprayer. That ended up really just electric paint sprayer. It worked great for what we needed to do. And it made painting the inside and the outside yes. so much more easier. Yeah. And along, along with some other stuff that we've got in the house that we just need to paint it. So. Yeah. Um, um, so that was something new that yeah. we never really did. So obviously years. somewhere in the middle of this we upped our budget. I think our second budget was like twelve grand. So, um, we, I mean, we got pretty far along where we thought 12 grand may be the roundabout, um, mm -hmm. where we was going to maybe just go over the budget, but maybe not spend too much more. And then I don't know what, at what point we were when we realized we were definitely going over budget. Yes, because. Um, over that second budget. <laughs> yeah, over the second budget, because I guess. Tires. We need new tires. We need new tires. Um, new brakes. New brakes for the um, for the tires, tires and wheels on um, the whole set. Um, and then I, I don't know. I think there was just some other things like the free freighter and everything just, was just nitpicky um, in like the prices. A yeah. lot of stuff we ordered, um, and then we realized I don't know. We had a lot of the things over time of making this camper we were purchasing stuff well in advance and then we realized we would need to spend more money to mm -hmm. either whatever but um installing this and then we had to get um all of the shades, shades uh all of the new just lights all the, the little things like just everything added up to where we ended up making our budget um i think we kind of gave up on making a budget, but we had, uh, obviously a topper. We wanted to finish the camper, but we did not want to spend more than yes. 20 grand building this camper. Yes, because the ultimate goal was to use this camper yeah. <laughs> and then sell it. So yeah. we couldn't put so much in, into it to where we couldn't get at least what we had put into it. Absolutely. Um, so we finished everything. And yeah. what was our final budget? Do you know about a roundabout price? I'm not going to, I'm not, I did not go back and look at like dollar for dollar, but I do know we were just over 18 grand yeah. when we finished this. So, so, and that's camper price included, right? That's camper price included, yeah. what we got it, um, and that's what we spent. We, with, without hiring people to do anything, and, um, that is not labor included because I feel like we after what one year and seven months we finally completed the camper yeah we took two trips we drove the camper to a nearby state park that was where we tested it out yes. made sure everything worked fine before like we took it how far is that down the road 15 uh, miles yeah 15 20 miles max before our main trip uh -huh. which was in Orlando which was hundreds of miles away yeah so we, it was like um 
yeah, I think Orlando's like 700 miles. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. But, yeah, so we, we took it from North Mississippi to Orlando, Florida, camped in it for nine nights, and then drove it back here. And um, we dealt with a lot of rain. And, um, we, and ice. And ice, yeah. We had to get back, and it was icing. Um, so, yeah, it it's definitely held up. Um, we're very proud of what we did we because we didn't know what we were doing when we got into this, obviously. Um, mm -mm. And I don't know. Like, we during the um, test phases of using the camper, um, we've been able to see maybe some things that we needed to fix or do, and we've done those things. Uh, so we feel like we, we really did a, a decent job, especially... Um, for the knowledge that we had. Yeah, so <laughs> so I've I've hauled things before, but it's always been like a trailer. Um, you were scared. I was scared to death. Like, I was scared enough just driving 15 miles down the road the first time we used it, um, but then to have to drive all the way to Orlando and back, going through the city of Birmingham, the city of Atlanta, yeah. um, and all of the other cities along the way, it was it was frightening to me because I, I like I said I one I've never hauled a camper before, and then it was just insane. Yeah. So I drove. If the speed limit said seventy <laughs> and you were behind me, I am very sorry because I did not do seventy. I drove slow. Yeah, but you conquered your fears. I conquered my fear. Yeah. Yeah. We we did it. We did. And we were happy. I am really sad that we weren't able to camp in this camper longer, like for more often, more trips, mm -hmm. because we set out to do this in, you know, four to six months, and we've had this camper t two and a half years at this point, and we've only got to use her twice, yep. but we've spent a lot of time in this camper, and everybody is super, that knows us, is super shocked that we are now putting her on the market. We just put her on the market. Um, and everybody's just like, why? Yeah. But we spent so much time in this camper, so much time, that we're, we have kind of lived the adventure that this camper has, um, we set out for. A little bit different of an adventure than we planned. Yeah. We have spent so much time in this camper that I will cheer when it's gone. That's yeah. Even um, though I do love it, and it turned out fantastic. We never planned to spend that much time. Um, I that many months. those many, That long yeah. of days. Yes. So. All of our time away from our regular jobs and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we have covered why we got this van, the process, or not van, oh my good lord. We didn't get a van. <laughs> but why we got this camper... Um, the process of making it what it is today and us using it. I guess the biggest question you would want to know is, would we do something like this again? Would you? No. Not a chance. Not a chance. But I will say, and this may have been your twisted mind working the entire time, <laughs> I'm so totally for a van now. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't care if it has a motor in it, it. Something can go wrong. Yeah. I did not enjoy hauling a camper. A camper is a little bit different. A lot of people like campers. Yeah. Long weekends. Um, you They're more affordable than a van, obviously. Not everyone wants a van. Um the uniqueness of this camper it's just a lot of benefits for a camper but yeah i think the what we want out of for this, yes for for our adventures and our home away from home long weekends trips road trips things like that the camper um is not really going to work for what we want it for no so for like on the road use um definitely i don't want to haul a camper anymore um, and <laughs> Wade's, I will drive a van. Wade's done hauling campers. But if we had property to where we could just drop this thing yeah. and leave it there, we would so totally keep this. Keep it and, and then use get it. a van for an, yeah. other things. And just use it to get away for a couple of days or whatever it may be. 
we don't have that option. Not right that's, now. That's no. why it's up for sale. Um, so, yeah, I don't think camper life is for me. C camper life could be for us in different circumstances, like you just said, but you don't feel comfortable hauling it. I would learn how to haul it, but I don't drive a lot. Wade drives us on most of our um, adventures, so yeah. I just think that it's probably not for us. Also, we, we put so much time and money into this camper that I think we're just done. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Yeah, so. I mean, and we have, she has served her purpose. Yeah, basically. we have longer goals. Yeah. Um, with the things that we have been doing with the remodeling of the house, this camper, these are just like stepping stones to get us to that longer yeah. goal. Um, which hopefully we can share with y'all sometimes. Yeah, really sooner soon. than later. Uh, the faster um, this camper sells would also but, but help. I, <laughs> but I do want to clarify. Me not being comfortable hauling this camper doesn't mean that I was very safe. There was no yeah. instances at all. Yeah, we where, went really slow. Where I put us or other vehicles in any type of danger. So I just basically stayed the lane. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest fears, though, I will say, other than just the sheer fact of hauling this thing, was getting gas for my truck. Because some of these gas stations aren't equipped for this type of thing and then when you have multiple big vehicles or whatever trying to get not necessarily in <laughs> but out there's one in particular in florida Oof. and this camper is small and there are people that have big giant campers and they take them with ease so these are just yeah. things well, that if you've never owned a camper these are things that you need to think about i just think it's a lot of times other people don't realize that their 15 foot vehicle can like completely mess up what I'm trying to do yeah. um, just by the way that they're parked or whatever. So anyways, so yeah. So I was Thanks. very competent driving this. Yeah. I just don't like doing it. It's just that. something people need to think about before they commit to a camper. Also, if you are looking to renovate a camper, an Airstream, an Avion, a metal rounded camper like this, or even just a vintage camper, just know it is a lot of work. A lot more work than you're probably going to set out for. A lot more money. Every project, usually, everybody says, anytime you make a budget, just do double that. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what we should have done. Never in my wildest dreams would I have expected it to take this time and to take this much money Neither did to I. renovate a camper. Neither did but, I. And I think, um, honestly, you don't realize it until you get into the little things, like every small thing that like everything underneath this bed is electrical and plumbing and it's just tiny components co components all stuck together just making this thing run all of that right there is thousands and thousands of dollars um and then just the time that it takes to find the things to figure out what kind of black tanks Freshwater tanks, gray tanks, all of those things to figure out what kind of tanks that we need. That was one thing that hung us up because this camper wasn't equipped for all of that. So Wade had to make modify it things. work. Yeah, yeah, modify. So it's just a lot to think about and it's a lot to prepare yourself for. So that is something that we wanted to share. Yes, especially if you live in a rural area that yeah. doesn't have the components that you can just easily go drive into the city or down the road to get those types of things so yeah. also consider that too but anyways having the experience um i wouldn't change it for basically no. anything um, it was fun, fun yeah. i learned a lot of things <laughs> we um, hated a lot of the projects but for the most part i felt like we we yeah. enjoyed ourselves for mm -hmm. that so the winter months was not as fun working in this camper um we grew, I will say that. We definitely grew, together and separately. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, with that, guys, um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the camper series. So, hopefully, soon we will be able to share with you our next big adventure and uh, what we are planning behind the scenes. So, thank you guys for following along. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.